Hello students, welcome to another lesson on OKE learning program. Today I'm going to take another lesson on grade 4 mathematics. And in this lesson, we are going to learn plane geometry, specifically angles. We are going to learn different types of angles and how to identify them. Okay, but before we get to learn the different types of angles and how to identify them, let's define an angle. What is an angle? An angle is a figure that is formed by the meeting of two line segments. So, if you take two line segments like this line is going here and this line is going there and then they meet at this point. Once they meet, they form angles. So the figure here formed between these two lines is an angle. Let me call it angle A. This figure here is also an angle. Let me call it angle B. This figure here is also an angle. Let me call it C and this one D. So we can see that the meeting of just these two line segments has created four different angles. Okay. So whenever we talk about angle, we are just talking about the meeting of two line segments. The figure that is formed by the meeting of two line segments. We have different types of angles based on their sizes and how they are formed. So let's look at some of the different types of angles and learn how to identify them wherever we meet them. A straight angle. The first angle I want us to talk about is straight angle. When we say an angle is straight, it means that angle is formed on a straight line. This is a straight line. I said an angle is formed when two line segments meet. Seeing one straight line here, does it mean no angle can be formed on it? It can just be that two straight, straight lines are just meeting at this point, okay? So an angle is going to be formed between them. Two straight lines are meeting at this point. Once they are meeting, there is an angle formed between them. But because they are two straight lines and they are meeting on a straight path, the angle is called a straight angle. And a straight angle measures 180 degrees. Okay, so an angle on a straight line is called a straight angle and it always measures 180 degrees. The next type of angle I want us to talk about is acute angle. We are classifying angles based on their sizes and how they are formed. An acute angle is an angle whose size is less than 90 degrees but greater than 0 degrees. So whenever you have an angle that is measuring between 0 and 90 degrees, then we call this angle an acute angle. So I can have an acute angle formed like this. So let me say here is 0 degrees, here is 60 degrees. So the angle formed between 0 and 90 here is 60 degrees, okay? This is 90 degree angle, the total of this. And this angle, 60 degrees, is between 0 and 90 degrees. So based on its side, we call it an acute angle, right? The next type of angle we are looking at is obtuse angle. Remember, an acute angle is an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees but greater than zero degrees. For an obtuse angle, its measure is greater than 90 degrees, but it's less than 180 degrees. We have already said that an angle that measures 180 degrees is a straight angle, and it is formed on a straight line. An angle that is less than 180 degrees, but greater than 90 degrees, is called an obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle can be like this, right? This angle formed here is 120 degrees. It is less than 180 degrees, but greater than 90 degrees. So we call it an obtuse angle. Let's move on to another type of angle. Right angle. 
The right angle is the most common type of angle every student knows. We all know that a right angle measures 90 degrees, and it is always represented as this. An angle that always measures 90 degrees is called the right angle, and it is always represented as this. I hope you remember the right angle triangle, which contains this figure in it, okay? Because it contains this figure, this angle in it, that's why we call it the right angled triangle. Reflex angle. A reflex angle is any angle whose measure is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. So we can have a reflex angle measuring as this. Let's say this angle is about 290 degrees. It is greater than 180 degrees, but it is less than 360 degrees. So any angle that is less than 360, but greater than 180 degrees, we call it a reflex angle. The next type of angle I want us to look at is complementary angles. Complementary angles, meaning that it is not only one angle that we are talking about. It represents two angles that share some kind of relationship. What are complementary angles? Any two angles that sum up to 90 degrees are called complementary. So whenever you have any two angles available and when you add them or you put them together, the result is always going to be 90 degrees, then those two angles are complementary to each other, okay? And for that reason, you can be given an angle and be told to find it's complementary. Simply means find an angle which when you add to the given angle, it's going to yield 90 degrees. We can also have another type of relationship that exists between two angles, just like the complementary relationship. This one is called supplementary angles. And the relationship is supplementary relationship. Two angles are supplementary, which when you add them, you always get 180 degrees, okay? Whenever you add two present angles, and the result is always going to yield 180 degrees, then these two angles are referred to as supplementary angles. And the relationship that exists between them is supplementary relationship. They always add up to 180 degrees. Angle properties of parallel lines. Parallel lines are any two lines that move along in the same plane but never meet. These two lines are parallel because Whenever I try to continue them in this plane, they will never meet. They will be moving individually, but along each other, okay? Whenever we cross parallel lines, we create sets of angles. And the line that we draw to cross the parallel lines is called the transversal line or transversal. So you can see that the transversal line has produced two sets of four pairs of angles on the parallel lines. These angles have some relationship because they are created on the parallel lines, okay? For example, angles occupying the same position on the two parallel lines are called corresponding angles. You can see that angle E and A angle E and A are occupying the same relative positions. If I take E and I take A, they are occupying the same relative positions. B and F are also occupying the same relative positions. The same applies to D and H and C and G. Such angles are called corresponding angles. And on the parallel line, corresponding angles are equal. Corresponding angles are equal. So we can say that A is equal to E, B is equal to F, 
C is equal to J and D is equal to H. They are all corresponding angles. So they have the same measure. We can also have another set of angles called alternating angles. Angles that form a Z. They form a Z. Right? Whenever you try to draw a Z through the parallel lines, they occupy the opposite sides of the Z. Such angles are called alternating angles. So we can see that C and F are alternating. And then one thing we have about alternating angles is that they are equal. So alternating angles are also equal, right? Angles that form a Z. We can also have this this one here, E and D. E and D are also forming some kind of stretched Z. So they are alternating. So we can also say that E is equal to D. Okay? Alternating angles are equal. Then the next thing we are going to talk about is vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles are angles that are directly opposite to each other, but in the vertical manner on the parallel lines. For example, these angles are directly opposite to each other, but they are horizontally opposite, right? These angles are directly opposite to each other, A and D, but they are vertically opposite to each other. Vertically opposite angles are equal, therefore I can say that A is equal to D. A and D are vertically opposite. C and B are vertically opposite angles. The same way E and H, F and J are all vertically opposite angles, and so they are equal, like that. So A is equal to D, B is equal to C, E is equal to H, and J is equal to F. They are vertically opposite angles. And finally, the last relationship of angles we are going to talk about is co-interior angles. Co-interior angles are angles that are found between the same enclosure. Okay, the same enclosure. You can see that we have two sides that are nearly closed within the parallel lines, right? This side and that side. And angles that are found within that enclosure are called co-interior angles. So we can say that C and E are co-interior angles and D and F are also co-interior angles. What we know about co-interior angles is that their sum is always 180 degrees. So whenever we add co-interior angles, we must get a straight angle or 180 degrees. Okay, they are not equal, but their sum always yields 180 degrees. So I can say that C plus E is going to give me 180 degrees. In much the same way, D and F must also sum up to 180 degrees, like that, okay? So on the power set, we have gotten to know corresponding angles, angles that are occupying the same relative positions. We have alternating angles that are formed within the Z, and then we have vertically opposite angles, angles that are vert vertically opposite to each other. We also have co-interior angles, Angles that are found within the same catchment. All the former ones are equal, but with the latter ones, which is the co-interior angles, they are not equal, but their sum yields 180 degrees all the time. Thanks for joining me for the lesson, okay? Meet me next time on another video lesson. Please make sure you come and pick up your assignment. Do it and submit it for marking. Take good care of yourself, stay home, 
stay safe. Bye-bye.